In this psychology revision video, we will revise learning styles and Willingham's learning theory, both from paper one, topic three, development. What do we need to know? We need to know definition of learning styles, some examples of learning styles. We need to know Willingham's learning theory, and we need to be able to evaluate Willingham's learning theory. So let's get straight into it. Uh, learning styles as a definition are different ways that a person can process information. So you've got to be really, you know, careful with your phrasing of a definition of this one. You know, it's learning styles, try not to use the word learn. Um, so we swap it out for the word process, okay, how to process information. Now, when learning styles became really popular, um, everyone sort of started to say, well, I've got a preferred learning style. I've got a preferred way of processing information. So what we need to know are firstly some examples of these learning styles, ways of processing information. And the first sort of really famous set of learning styles to come out were the VAK learning styles. And that's each letter standing for a different style of learning. So you have V for visual, and this is people who learn best by reading or seeing pictures. We have A for auditory, and this is for people who learn best by listening or speaking. And we have the K for kinesthetic, which is for people who learn best by doing something, um, actually getting involved, moving or making something. Um, after the VAK, uh, more learning styles started to come out. And the other ones that we need to be aware of for our psychology exam are the verbalizer and visualizer learning styles. So a verbalizer is a person who uh, obviously likes to process their information verbally, and that means they like to learn from written information. Um, so they like to basically using words. So they like to uh, read a book, listen to a podcast, uh, maybe record themselves. And sort of these revision strategies are quite important for us to know because we could get asked how a verbalizer likes to revise. Then you've got the visualizer, and these are people who tend to prefer uh, visual information. So that is that they might learn from diagrams and pictures, um, and they often even think using pictures as well. And again, we could get asked how a person uh, who is a visualizer might revise for a test. So that might be through mind mapping or drawing diagrams or flow charts and things like that. Now, learning styles were quite popular for a number of years until Daniel Willingham. Uh, Daniel Willingham, Willingham's learning theory came along and started to research these, this brand new scientific psychological study of learning styles. And the bad news for learning styles is if you can remember from class that the evidence showed that learning styles did not improve grades. So this led to Willingham creating his own theory about learning. So we'll cut it down as quickly and as shortly as we can. It's quite a tricky one um, to remember, but we just have to remember it. It often comes up as a big question, so make sure you know this theory. Right, Willingham, what did he say? Right, learning styles do not improve learning, so we should stop using them. Basically, he's saying that learning styles don't work. He's saying that learning styles are fake. Okay, all the evidence, all the research, it's all made up. Okay, his research shows that they do not improve grades. Instead, he said we shouldn't be focusing students um, on, on their learning styles. We should be teaching them how to store information. And that means we need to help students with memory strategies. When it comes to learning styles, um, teachers should use the best method for the content of the lesson, not the child's preferred style. OK, so just because you're a visual learner doesn't mean we should tailor the learning to you. Uh, we should use the learning style that fits the content of the lesson. And finally, just because you might have a preferred process, uh, way, you know, way of processing information, a preferred learning style, all students should be taught how to use all styles, including the ones that are not their preferred style, so that they can access uh, learning or information in the future when it is presented in that style. So remember we said in class, you might not be a kinesthetic learner, but when you're learning to drive, you need to give it a go. So you have to be able to access all the different learning styles. So that's basically a very 
you know, a very brief rundown of Willingham's learning theory that if you learn those four bullet points, you can get uh, maximum marks on any Willingham theory question. We have to be able to evaluate his theory. So we'll run through some positives and negatives for this for you. What can we say about Willingham's theory? Well, firstly, there's a lot of evidence to back up his ideas, a lot of evidence that shows that learning styles do not work. And some of that evidence clearly shows that learning styles do not improve grades. If learning styles worked, you should get higher grades if we use your learning style. However, evidence shows that students who use their preferred learning style do not get higher grades than students who use different learning styles. This theory has got great applications to education, so we can really improve learning in schools. So, you know, this theory has got real world value. We can really improve the learning and the grades of our students if we listen to Willingham. Stop learning styles. Let's teach children how to remember things instead. However, on the negative, um, you know, learning styles do offer some good things. Firstly, if we were to completely disregard learning styles, it might stop us being able to encourage some maybe more difficult students that find learning really challenging and the learning style method might help them get involved. And also, if we completely take away learning styles, it would quite you know, take away some of the imaginative lessons and creative teaching that you may have had. And that would be a real shame. It might make lessons a bit boring. And we know we don't really want that. We want lessons to be fun and enjoyable and memorable for everyone. So that's the evaluation of Willingham. So here's your summary of this video. These are the things that we've gone through, definitions and examples of learning styles and Willingham's learning theory. On the right, you've got all the keywords that you need to know for this mini topic. Uh, any questions, you know where I am.